Welcome to another Pixelgate Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over some more debugging options. Specifically, I'm going to go over frame stepping and how we can use this to better see what your project's doing when you're testing. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so I'll be using this Mega Man-like project that me and Noob K are working on. And so if I click play test just to show you what's going on, you can see that the scene starts right away and it's pretty lively. There's a lot going on. I've got a couple different spawners spawning these things. I've got a, a platform that's moving along a path and your points just to kind of dodge them all. All right. Now, if I wanted to like debug something on this map, it would be kind of hard because there's a lot going on. So we can actually take this uh, step at a time by frame stepping. So let me just restart this and I'm going to be getting hit, but let's just go. So you can hit F1 right here and you can go to debugging menu and you can go to performance speed testing. As soon as you see this right here, you can click pause and it pauses the game. Now you should probably already know this. You can also already know that you can change the FPS right here and various stuff. But one thing that you might not know is that you can frame step this. So if I click this next button right here, you can see that it's frame stepping now. And so to further see this, let's say that I was having a issue with the spawners for these guys. I've got one spawning on the left side and I've got one spawning on the right side. So I can go to object data here and I can check out my spawners so I can uh, type in spawner and I think these are case sensitive. Yep. They're case sensitive. So that that's one reason I lower case everything in pixel game maker is so that when I'm typing out for searches and stuff, I just know everything is lowercase. All right. So here's my two spawners right here. And we can see that right now they're in a process action and say I was having a, a problem right now. If, if I was to just hit play normally, you'll see how fast these will just go in and out. You can't even see the actions that they're doing. But now if I frame step, let's look at this one right here, spawner six. So we're looking at action name process. If I frame step slowly. Oh, I guess it was that one first, but now it will be the six next here. So, and you got, you got to remember, there we go. Okay. So this is the one frame that goes into action name spawn from the right side. So if I press next again, that frame is going to be gone and you can see it goes right back to process. So now you can see how specifically you can get into each frame. And when I was in there, I could see, you know, some stats or something, say some numbers were changing. I could see specifically what numbers were changing and all this other stuff. The other cool thing about this feature is that you can, you can kind of prep an input. So for instance, let's say I wanted to see the player jump. So let's go and type in player. Okay. So there's our player here and I can press the space button, which is the jump. Okay. Now it won't do anything while we're in this, this pause right here. But as soon as I click the next play test or, uh, sorry, the, the next frame, you'll see that it starts to jump. So you can actually input buffer and then test to see if that buffer or to see if that input does something. Now it doesn't work on all inputs and it, that might just be my keyboard, not allowing more than a few inputs at a time or something like that. But it, it does work on, on most of the stuff that I need, such as movement or, or inputs for shooting and stuff like this. But yeah, so now you can see that the player is now falling. You can also check the coordinates if you're having coordinate issues just along that, that path there. And then if you want to just speed it up a little bit, you can, you know, press play and then pause it again, or you can just, uh, just keep clicking it really fast and, and kind of have the slow motion feature. And one more benefit to show with frame stepping is going to be through object play testing. Now object play testing is when you go to the objects tab, you select an object and you click this button or you press F six, that will take you to an object test. And that way you can see your actions and links updating in live. In order to do that, you need to normally the layer was right here. You need to delete the player that, object that's in here. And then you need to take that collision layer that your player is on. Usually I call that my player layer and you need to take that and move it all the way to the left because when you do object play test, it throws in the object automatically. So you don't need it on the scene. If I had two players, I would be controlling two, uh, two objects basically. So since I just want one and then the other thing is, is that it throws it into the highest layer. So you got to make sure that the, the collision layer is the highest layer. So you might have to turn some of these layers off or move them below or whatever to test, but it, it can give you a better idea of what's going on in your actions. So for instance, now, if I was to click on object play test here, you can see this 
and if I pause it right here and move this over, and if I unpause, you can see real quickly that my links and my actions are highlighting and stuff like this. So the cool thing about frame stepping now with this kind of a setup is that you can now see that I'm in idle and then you can see the link actually activate and go into walk. And then now that I'm not inputting anymore, you should see the link go back to idle. And then I could press space and there I go into jump. And then I'm jumping for a while and then you can see when it goes to fall. Right there, it transitioned to fall and then back down to idle. You can also see, let's say I get hit by one of these guys. You can see now common action hit is activated and it goes until the, until it executes object action back to idle. So we could do this for testing a ladder climb or for our death. Let's, let's say I go to, I fall, right? So I'm falling and you can see that it was in fall, but the common action rang true and now it's in death fall. And that's where it will remain until the sequence ends. So yeah, I just wanted to show that that is another great way to frame step test. So I use this all the time. This is probably one of my number one ways to debug is having the object information and frame stepping. I don't use this object testing as much, but I think that especially for beginning bug testing, it's very good because you can see it more visually. But this really gives you the same information when you're in tune with the project a little more. So this is why I, I mostly just use between these. But yeah, I just wanted to give this little tip. And with that said, uh, any questions, Steam Forms, Discord, we'll get you figured out. And we'll see you at the next video.